So we're going to present a few scenarios with data, draw the scatter plot, or maybe I've already provided one, and try to figure out is the data correlated or not. So here is a table of rainfall in a city uh, and bike speed, uh, the average bike speed of the people that are riding bikes in that city. So one city has one centimeter of rainfall and the bike speed is three kilometers an hour and so on. Uh, this data doesn't seem to be very connected to each other, but who knows, we'll graph it. So 1 comma 3, 2 comma 9, 3 comma 5, for the first three data points. 1 comma 3, 2 comma 9, 3 comma 5, and if I do the rest of the data points, you will get a scatter plot that looks like this. And my question to you is, is this correlated or not? Well, you might say, well, I can draw data through here, but then there's all these outliers down here. I can, but then you could say I could draw data through here, and then you have the outliers in the other direction. In order for the data to be correlated, we need a clear uptrend or a clear downtrend as we graph the data. We don't see that, so it does not appear there's any correlation. We're going to say no correlation. And it makes sense, right? Because I don't believe that, uh, well, I shouldn't say I don't believe. It's possible that rainfall could influence bike speed. Maybe, maybe you know, um, Maybe uh, you have a lot of rain, maybe the bikes are traveling slower, but I think you would see some sort of clear trend line. Here we don't see anything. These things appear to be unconnected in this data set, so we say there's no correlation. All right, here is problem number two. We have a table. Uh, we have a, a, a bunch of people, we take a survey. How many books do you read per month? Here's the number of books read per month. And then we actually calculate the average number of spelling errors per paper that someone writes. So we want to basically plot and see if there's a relationship or a correlation between how much a person reads and how many spelling errors they have when they write papers. So the first uh, point is 0, 9, and then 2, 9. So these are different people. So 0, 9, and then uh, let's see here, 2, 9. All right. And then we're going to take a look at our next set, 3, 6, 5, 5. So 3, 6 and five comma five. So three comma six, five comma five. Then we have six comma five, seven comma three. Six comma five, seven comma three. And then we have eight comma one, 10 comma zero. Eight comma one, 10 comma zero. So we have eight comma one and 10 comma zero. So this is the scatter plot we've drawn. And what I'm actually going to do is transition from looking to this. We'll look at our kind of nice, pretty version. I wanted to, to actually construct the scatter plot to give you the practice. But here's the pretty version of exactly the same data. And my question to you is, is this data correlated or not? It looks like there's a pretty clean trend down where the number of books that someone reads per month increases and the number of spelling errors that they have in a, in a, per paper, they have decreased. So it looks like there's a pretty strong correlation. Is it positive or negative? Positive correlation goes up like this and negative correlation goes down like this. So this is negative correlation. Now, does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense. It shows there's a relationship a pretty strong relationship between how much someone reads and how many spelling errors they have. You could construct in your mind that those are, one is causing the other. That because you read more, then you spell better. But you don't know that just from this data. Yes, it's pretty compelling. It might be true, but you don't know it. Just because they're correlated does not mean that this causes that. There could be other factors. Maybe, you know, you uh, do a lot of practice spelling tests. Maybe some of these people that get low spelling errors, maybe the people that read more books also enjoy spelling. Uh, I don't know, you know, crossword puzzles or something. So it might be that the people who are bookworms also enjoy learning how to spell correctly, and so they both go down like this. You don't really know what's causing, uh, what's causing what, but you know that they're correlated and they're very strongly negatively correlated. All right, let me take this down and we're going to do our third problem. All right, here's our last problem. We have a table of data. The number of hours in the sun for these fruit trees, let's say, and the number of fruit produced by these trees. So one hour in the sun on a tree means that two pieces of fruit were produced. 10 hours of uh, sunlight means, in this case, for this data, eight uh, pieces of fruit were produced. So the first couple points, one comma two, two comma three, three comma three. So 
1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, and if you plot the rest of the points, you'll get a data set that looks like this. And it's pretty clearly correlated because we can see that as we increase the number of hours in the sun, we have a nice trend line showing that the number of fruit produced is also going up, and it's slanted up and to the right. And so is this data correlated? Yes. Is it positive or negative correlation? We're going to say that it's a positive correlation. Now, does it mean that the number of hours in the sun is causing the trees to produce more fruit? It's possible, and that would make sense to me, but this data is not proving that, okay? There's a lot of information that's not in this. For instance, is the ground fertilized? Um, do the people that tend to these all these trees, are they doing the equal amount of work for every tree? There's tons of variables. Are there rodents? Are there, are there animals eating the fruit? You know, are we controlling for everything? So yes, if all of those other things are equal, uh, the, you know, the, the, the soil and the fertilizer and the rodents and the farming and all the, everything's the same and it's on the same plot of land, then yes, maybe it makes sense to me that more hours in the sun means more fruit, but we don't know that. This data doesn't say that. So you have to be careful. You can't say that this causes that. All you can say is they're correlated and it looks like they're highly correlated in a positive fashion. So in this lesson, we wrap up the idea of scatter plots and correlation. And I'd like you to solve uh, these and notice there's not much work, but I want you to think about them. I want you to think about what correlation is. I want you to pull some examples from your own life of variables and data that might be correlated and convince yourself that you do not know that one is causing the other, even though they might be correlated because in real life, Usually it's very, very hard to prove when something is causing something else. You might have very strong evidence, but usually things are not so, 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 so slam dunk. You, you may not know with certainty what's happening as far as what is causing what. So in statistics, we talk about what is correlated and we put together a body of evidence to try to prove what is causing what, but it's rarely given by a single chart like this and it's rarely given by a single little conclusion that you draw. Usually it takes a lot of data and a lot of work to eliminate all the other possibilities before you can say that something is causing something else. So solve these, make sure you understand correlation. Follow me on to the next lesson. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.